are rolling. Hey, welcome back everyone. And in this video, I'm going to show you often overlooked feature in Axure, uh, which is quite hard to understand, especially for, let's say, beginner Axure prototypers, as well as, you know, intermediate ones. And we tend to default to like a really basic manual implementation of things rather than using that built-in complex functionality. What I'm talking about is repeaters. It's basically a functionality is in its name. It, it allows you to repeat a certain layout, a certain object, and then make grids, tables, like a flexible functionality for you to add as many items of the same exact styling and structure as you know you have defined. You know, in my sketch file right here, I have these cars defined for, let's say, e-commerce shop, which is fictitious scenario, right? I could just copy and paste one item and then replicate it manually in Axure, or I could use the repeaters to allow me to make a grid like this just using one of the items. So let me actually show you how it's done. If I go right ahead in Axure, in widgets panel, you're gonna scroll down the built-in functionality repeater is there, and as you can see, it's kind of like a table. So ABC by one, two, three. And that is basically what repeater really is uh, at the basic level. It allows you to edit just one item and then replicate that for several different instances. So let me just speed this up and, and just add our existing styling from sketch file into one of the cells. As you can see, I just clicked in and then I can edit the repeater. So let me do that right away. So boom, I just copied it, all the items in. You can see we have an image here. We have uh, a title, a subtitle, a price tag, and then a button, let's say. And if I just close it, as you can see, the repeater automatically added a few items. So the three items as, as, as done. And as you can see, it maintained the structure. Now, let me show you exactly how we can reformat this so you can actually add more items, make bigger grids, bigger tables, you know, whatever you want to do. So if you would click on it, on actual repeater, once you set up all those objects, uh, you can add interactions, of course, you can, you know, do all the jazz. I'm probably gonna cover it in a bit more advanced video, but for now, what's most important here is that you can edit the data, let's say. And as you can see, if you scroll down in the style panel and you have your repeater selected with those three items for now, let's say, you can set border, you can set fill, let's say, it adds to all of it. Um, as I have a background, as you can see, that tiny black edge, it would add a background underneath, but you don't really need it. You rarely need it unless you haven't defined a specific outline to your object. Maybe you can use it that way. You can also add borders, corners, you can add padding. So let's say if I would add five, on every single one of the paddings, you're gonna see that it actually increased around our objects, around all the repeater. It comes in handy if you want to dynamically restructure your content around so it doesn't clash, let's say. Then you also can define the spacing. I like this the most because at the moment our objects are glued, as you can see, tiny streak there in black. So if I, let's say, add, I don't know, maybe let's say at least 15, we kind of can realign it so it's all dynamic. And then if we choose horizontal like so, you're gonna see that all our objects now are spaced out. And if I increase, let's say the column uh, spacing to 30, now our spacing increase like so. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you can also wrap it, let's say, so you can say how many items per row you want to display. I could just say three. And I can also alternate colors, let's say. So that would come in handy if it's a table, let's say, and you use a repeater to uh, do different rows, you can alternate it that way. But this is, maybe I can touch it in a different video, for example, but play with it, experiment with it, and see exactly how you can use it. And also you can add pagination. So let's say if you want to have like a WordPress type of effect, you can add that. And let me actually show you exactly what I mean by that. So now, as you can see, we have three items. If I would add another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. So let's say maybe let's add, I don't know, nine, like so. This is our shop basket. We can, for a good measure, add IDs. And if we go down and let's say we say, split it into multiple page, and we just allow six per page. Boom, you see it trimmed it right away. And that would add the pagination. Now you would probably want to play with the components later on. Let's preview exactly what, what I mean. But as you can see, 
we have our six objects but no pagination so you would want to add another component and then target it by actual code to reload the page right so it's kind of just like making an ex excerpt of of your thing let me just take it off and as you can see we have nine items and we can make it vertical we can make it horizontal we can say maybe it's four per row like so why the hell not and just let me sh let me actually show you um, so you, it makes even more sense if I just eliminate the background, let's say, and add a border um, of one, let's say like so, you're gonna see that how our repeaters are working right now. And as you can see, we have a label per each. And if we preview, as you can see they're all labeled. So they have some sort of label in them. You can delete that label if you wish. So let's say if I just take it off, it just takes off a value. It's real up to you how you want to style it. If you if you add a background on top of it, it's not going to be visible. If you, let's say, disable the, uh, the border, it's also not going to be visible. So yeah, again, it's as usual. You need to play with it and see exactly what you can achieve with it because you can do a lot. So boom, that's how we use repeaters to replicate. But now you might ask what happens if you want to restyle certain items in the repeater or you want to add different images or different names, you know, randomize these things. Now you're going to have to define exactly what the columns mean. So let's say this could be our column image. Um, this could be our column product name, let's say. And this is going to be our column sub title or actually let's skip it for now so let's just change you know two items you're gonna you can just do it on your own later on here in an image let's say you would have to almost like save a lot of different imagery in order to uh, assign it to these type of like uh, repeater data sets per se so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna go to let's say um, unsplash or even Google images and just search for 10 imagery and say maybe like nine of them. So it covers our grid. Boom. So I saved quite a few and now I'm going to go ahead and just say import image. So right, if you right click on one of them, you can do that. And I'm going to select, let's say import that image. And as you can see, it allows us to preview like so. So I see that this is what, what the image would look like. Good enough. And so I have only six items. Uh, let me reduce it by maybe three by three, like so. And what, what happens next is that in, in the product name, you also can say something like Lorem 1, Ipsum 2. I should do a trick. So as you can see, we create like a data set, set basically. And every time we're going to lo load the page, we're going to have to tell Axure to preload these values into the repeater, because otherwise you can't really edit individually any of the cards. Let me show you how it's done. So as you can see, repeater is going to have the default uh, label like so. We're just going to have to go into the card and just give it, let's say, plus plus product name and then maybe dynamic panel also we can Actually, I don't need the dynamic panel. I can just break break it away and, and just keep the image like so. And just say tent pick. So I just label the items which we're gonna update with that data set from the repeater. And going back, let's say on item load, when we load the repeater, we're just gonna go ahead and just go crazy with defining those things. So we can say set text, target, product grid, uh, let's say product name, I guess is a good one. So that text field. So now as you can see, it's set to images and it just said IMG. But what we can do is click on function. And here, as you can see, is our variable defined. So we can just say insert variable or function and choose different. And we're going to have an option to repeat our data set. And here you can see predefined ones, the custom we made. So this is the custom one. The product name is the one I defined. If I click OK, boom, as you can see, that data set values now are in the repeater. 
How cool is that? And that's just one statement. Now another statement would be the set image. So as you can see on top, we can select set image and then select tent pick, which we just defined. And then set default image, we are gonna go to value. And in value, in functions, we are also gonna insert the repeater item. And let me see if I can find it. Don't remember what we called it. Uh, product name, item image, maybe? Yeah. And that's it. As you can see, now we pre-populated our repeater of custom areas. So everything what was defined in this table is now being placed in our repeater with a structure we defined before. So let's preview that. Let's see if it works. Then we preview. Works pretty well. And everything is custom. And this is how you make basically custom different bits here and there. And I would just recommend you to experiment with it. Because let's say if you would want to now allow the users to add a certain object for whatever reasons, maybe these are the, like the people cards or the photo cards and you want to add another photo, you would want to play with interactions and see how that's done. I'm going to cover that in the next video about repeaters, but I think this should give you a rough idea of what you can achieve and you can achieve a lot of this functionality. I hope this video was useful and you liked it and enjoyed it. And as usual, leave a comment down below if I can cover something else in action. If you have some issues, please let me know. I give it a like, share with your friends and I'll see you next time.